What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we're gonna be trying to get the engine and transmission out. That is our primary goal, because once we actually get those two things out, we can start disassembling everything else and start transferring things over, because the heart and soul can't just go in just yet into the E91 car. Um, we do need to make sure all the other hoses, lines, pipes, weather guards, everything is transferred over, and then we can insert the engine and transmission. We also need to fabricate ourselves a bracket, and I'm hoping to look at that by the end of this video when we get the engine and transmission transmission out and I'm hoping that's something we can just go ahead and de-weld and then re-weld onto our new car instead of fabricating our own bracket I prefer to use like the original body pieces we will see if that's doable I just really want an OEM finish and if we can achieve that that would be pretty awesome now mind you guys it is 110 once again today but it's gonna be 110 later today as of right now it is 90 and 90 is really good news so for those of you guys who missed the last episode we pretty much got this engine from the front end and the suspension fully disconnected we dropped the suspension on both sides disconnected all the cables we went ahead and disconnected literally everything that i could possibly see for the engine other than the steering rack we do need to disconnect the steering rack uh, just to make sure that doesn't get held on when we try to drop the subframe and we also did drop the exhaust which is sitting right back there so other than the drive shaft i believe there's a few other little things we need to disconnect on the transmission so we got to drop this entire thing down below and i do believe we have to remove some things over here i'm not really too sure this is a manual so i think it should just drop directly out uh, but I could be wrong so let's go ahead and remove this centerpiece and uh, just pretty much get everything over here in the center portion disconnected so the transmission could just drop straight down without ripping any cables Before we actually get into today's video, today's video is sponsored by Simply Carbon Fiber. Simply Carbon Fiber is a carbon fiber company that makes not only wallets, but also watches, eyeglasses, a bunch of other accessories, including phone cases. Actually, there's so many things that they make, it's absolutely insane. And I absolutely love their products. I don't actually just say that I absolutely love their products. I literally use a wallet every single day, and I use their watch whenever I go out for special occasions. For those of you guys who wanna get some carbon fiber accessories for like pretty much that fit our car enthusiast personalities, make sure to check them out down below. This is their slim carbon fiber wallet that holds so many of my cards. I can go ahead and just fold all of it like that, pick out the one I want, or I can just pull out the cash in the back. You know, I'm currently broke right now, so I only got some ones. I had some hundreds in there, but I had to deposit that into the bank and I had to use it on some car parts. But anywho, I still got some ones. But on a realistic note, guys, if you guys want to check out their wallets, make sure to use my discount code. Link's gonna be down below. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump back into the video. So because this is a manual, I literally think it does just drop directly through. It's first time actually removing a manual transmission because normally I do manual swaps. So uh, yeah, it looks like literally there's nothing there that's in the way nothing connected went ahead and just remove the two other things that get in the way of it obviously this is something you would have to remove but uh maybe even that we could have left it in there but it doesn't matter now that we have it pulled out we can actually just transfer that over to the e91 as well so at this point guys let's go ahead and just disconnect the drive shaft um because i think that will pretty much leave us with a few more little things and then we can actually drop the engine again i'm hoping we're super close to it we'll find out in a bit And guys, after hours of finicking, we finally got the drive shaft disconnected. Um, I think, honestly, we can just leave it like that because once we actually remove that transmission uh, support bracket, uh, the transmission should come down. We do need to unbolt the shifter. I believe there's four screws that hold on the shifter. And then we do need to unbolt the steering rack. So let me go ahead and just do those two things. And then I'm actually gonna have my boy Erlan come over and just double check everything for me uh, because this is the first time ever pulling an engine completely on my own. And honestly, if having him just double check that I disconnected everything will give me that peace of mind before we actually drop it and then break a couple things and that would suck because because parts on this car cost more than an f80 i don't know why the e90 m3 chassis parts for the engine cost way more than the f80 i think maybe because um these are becoming more rare possibly i'm not really too sure they just always have been if you look up fenders for this car cost more than an f80 if you guys look up a hood cost more than an f80 a bumper it's just kind of crazy from the factory obviously it's cheaper but in the used car market for some reason it's just more money so anyways i'm gonna go ahead and just do the two things i just mentioned earlier and then my boy alon's gonna come over double check everything
everything and possibly we're gonna be taking this bad boy out today and I'm super stoked for that. And guys, after getting the car back on the grass with the two rear wheels on the ground with the transmission, the, the slave cylinder, it's called the slave cylinder, right? That I pulled out of it that connects to the clutch. Some sort of cylinder. Some kind of cylinder. We went ahead and disconnected. We actually released the shifting mechanism as well. Um, so the shifter is dropped as well. And then at this point, I mean, the only, I have a jack sitting on the transmission. At this point, I think it's just the subframe holding it, but I called my boy Erlan over because uh, he's done a few uh, engine swaps himself. And I just wanna make sure that if anything, you know, gets snagged or caught up, uh, that I have somebody else here to help me because this is the first time that I've ever actually fully disconnected everything. And I'm pretty sure like 99% sure we are like 100% ready to go. And uh, as soon as we get this engine out, guys, we will be doing a full service on it. But I do want to start swapping in everything else from the engine. But we want to detail everything, clean it up, start swapping things over to the E91. And then once the engine gets fully serviced, we'll slot that in the E91 as well. But also, guys, you guys know that there's a lot of wiring and stuff like that we need to do as well. But anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and just look over everything and then finally pull this bad boy out. And guys, this is day two. So we actually got the engine out of the car last night. Uh, not last night, yesterday morning, uh, right around probably midday-ish. Uh, we were trying to pull the engine out. I was, at least I was trying to. And then Erlan was like, hey man, we're gonna have to do a couple janky ways to actually get this off because the way to properly drop a stuff frame out of a car, you need to basically have quick jacks that lifts the car up and this thing's on the ground. Or you pretty much have to use two different jacks to go left to right, left to right, left to right, until the point to where the rear transmission shifter is out of the car and we can actually push the frame away from the engine and then we ended up pulling the engine forward so um yeah that was a mess and a half throughout the process because of how long it took i didn't notice that the camera literally cut out because usually how cameras work for those guys who don't know i don't know if there's a way to change in the settings but i've always just kind of kept it the way it is but basically after 30 minutes of recording if you don't actually go back and re-record the camera just shuts off so uh kind of annoying it definitely took us over 30 minutes to get this thing out so um good news is we didn't really break anything i think i broke like one clip trying to get this engine out out, but thank the lord everything on this engine everything around it everything is in perfect condition i was thinking when we actually do the valve covers because this stuff's like very crispy and just like i don't know it looks like literally just paint damage like valve cover paint damage so the good thing is it's not plastic on m3 so these can just be sanded down and probably use some like heat spray paint to actually get that redone so i'm thinking when we actually redo the valve cover gaskets should we paint these in orange to paint match the car or should we just do them in black or should we just like, leave it the way it is and just sand it down and just paint it in like silver or like some color along those lines let me know down below All right, guys, so I started test fitting some of the bolts over here. I'm definitely going to be cleaning these up before actually putting on the finished product. I cleaned this up. I'll clean that up. Just a little practice, the ground over there. Um, things that I'm noticing is that all this transmission tunnel stuff over here, to transfer everything from that car to this car, I'm actually going to have to gut the interior of the E90 M3 because I just forgot. Literally, to mount everything here before putting in the engine, I need to have the stuff from the inside cabin installed over here. So that being said, guys, the most primary thing I need to do right, right now is just to get access to the slave cylinder on the other cars. So to do that, I need to actually remove the driver's seat. I need to honestly disconnect as much things as possible, remove the driver's carpet and just get access to that. Cause once we actually get that thing unplugged on the E90 M3, we can go ahead and start putting all the weather pieces over here, power wash it all. But yeah, I can't remove any of this because of this guy right over here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and remove the driver's seat, remove the carpets and uh, try to get access to that.
And guys, we made a bunch of progress. We got to dash out the front A pillars, the carpet, the seats. I actually removed all the bolts in the seats just to be safe, just in case you don't get power for whatever reason later. I learned my mistake on that car. Um, the sunroof, uh, thankfully, is super easy to uninstall. You don't actually need power for this to uninstall it. And what I mean by power, um, to get the headliner out on the E91, you have to move it a little bit to take out the screws that releases the headliner. Uh, this car, you don't. So uh, yeah, I don't have to worry about this right now, which is a good thing because I don't want any water getting in. Um, but we are in a severe drought in California again. So, uh, yeah, no water is going in anyways. If you guys look in here, the goal was is to try to get to this line the entire time. So, um, that looks like it goes all the way up to the slave brake cylinder right over here. So, we need to figure out a way to disconnect that and then drag the line straight through there, which will then allow us to actually move everything off the front end. So, uh, at least mostly everything. So, without further ado, let me go ahead and try to move that brake line. I cut back to you guys uh, when we actually start installing everything onto the E91. All right, guys, so something that I'm now noticing, I don't know if you guys can see in this general area right over here, this is the all-wheel drive. I think that's pretty much where the front um, differential or something sits there. Um, so there's like an indentation over here, and there's like two bolt-on pieces right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and look into mine. There is welding points right over here, so we could grind all that out. And you guys can see they're two separate metals, so we should be able to do the same thing on the rear-wheel drive one and then actually take that piece off. And you guys can see over here, there's like some kind of mounting piece over here. I think we have to drill that out. There's like there's four weld spots. We just gotta drill those out and that should come out as well. I wanna do more of an OEM finish. So I don't really wanna like make a custom bracket. I'd rather honestly replace the metal because you guys can see that the metal in here is you can separate it from the actual frame. So I prefer to do that than to actually make some kind of custom bracket. Um, so that being said, here is the uh, all wheel drive one. And this one over here is the rear wheel drive one. So again, you guys can't see anything. There's nothing sticking out of this side. And on this side, there's this piece right here. It looks like it is uh, seam welded right over here, but we can just go ahead and cut that right there. Um, drill out all of this as far back as we can possibly go and then cut that off. And this is the piece we're gonna end up replacing. So I do need to figure out a way to cut this in a way that doesn't ruin the integrity of the car because there is a mounting point right over here and it looks like this piece is one with this. Um, so I don't really wanna mess that up. <laughs> Just sitting in the engine bay. I'm probably gonna go ahead and call it a day and I'm gonna do a lot of research on what I need to do next because honestly, I'd rather do this now than later and get this whole transmission tunnel situation sorted because if we can get that sorted onto the wagon, um, then we're pretty much good to go and then we can pretty much honestly assemble this whole engine bay and then put the engine and transmission in here and it should be a running and driving car at least, which would be pretty dope. Even if we can't get all the wiring sorted, we should be able to at least get the wiring to the engine bay and everything to the point where at least we can start the car and move it which would be super nice see so yeah, you guys if you have any advice for what i'm about to do right now let me know down below if you guys like the progress we made in this video make sure to smash the like button but without further ado guys i love you all so much remember to stay humble i'll see you on the next one peace out